G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Bros with Brains with myself, Ben Mayfield-Smith and the gentlemen that are joining me here, Christopher and the big fella, Aaron Scaffey. How are you doing boys? Hey, I got called big fella instead of Chris. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> the most elite acknowledgement around a gym. You'll take it's it. it. It's like when people call you big dog. They don't big know dog. your name, big dog. Done. I've, I'm going home. My gym session is finished. <laughs> I just cream my pants. I can go home now. <laughs> Pretty much. Like the biggest guy in the gym acknowledges you as being big. You're like, I'm done. I'm finished. I I quit. I win. My life is peak. It's all downhill from here. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) It was actually great when we trained yesterday because there was no one else in the gym. So me and Aaron were the biggest in the gym. So make you feel like a big dog, right? When no one else is in the gym. How many people were there today, this morning? That wasn't too bad. Um, Probably about the same as yesterday. Pretty quiet, really. It was good. Yeah, that's what you want. Great. I don't know what. People have jobs or something, apparently. (laughs) <laughs> What's up? No, I saw you didn't put our uh, five planks on your hack squat. No, nah, I have a little uh, niggle in my left calf that I picked up That's from that hamstring mind. session on Sunday. And every time I was going down, I was just kind of, well, I actually trained calves on uh, Sunday. So <laughs> I, I don't know, I just picked up a little niggle and I was just like, felt a little bit shitty out of the bottom. So I was like, oh, I'll play it a bit conservative and just go to, in my head, I actually don't know what the numbers are. I think it was 230, but I was just, Playing it a little bit, so over over cautious, I guess. But oh well, feel, feeling good. I reckon next week we've got it. Next week we'll have the five plates. I just next want to have that have little bridge. I'm, it's like you, four you point seven five I'm, plates. I'm just going to load five plates, and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a week of prep down as well. Week of prep down, I suppose. That, that's what else is going on. So, so the new eating disorder has now fully developed. The eating disorder dis- developed, and I'm, uh, you know, my my hunger and appetite are a ten. I'm feeling like I want to eat everything in sight. Right there. <laughs> Just the usual, just the standard, you know? <laughs> standard week one comp prep. Standard week one Exclusive comp diet. I love it. Exclusive. <laughs> what about you, gentlemen? What else is uh, what else is cracking with the two of you? Mate, as we can all see, the new humble abode is is set up and ready to go. It's fantastic. No TV. I missed the TV on the wall. <laughs> uh, I was getting too angry on the conversation, so I was just playing it safe and got rid of it. No, you know what I just picture with that TV? I just picture you laying back like these ones and just stroking it. Oh, 100%. <laughs> you don't have to picture it because that's what's happening. Every single night, that's what's happening. Like, end the night doing that. I completely forgot where we were, to be honest. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> I fucking we'll, lost we'll, it we'll entirely. Have, we, we, decided, we decided to pause the podcast just because the uh, sound quality on Ben's end, he's decided to move rooms or change his mic setup, and now it's gone to shit. So yeah. he's just going to have to basically sit on the mic. And um, The real truth is, Gaff, he's going to nothing. Change. It's not really a change for him anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, he likes, to, he likes to sit on things all day, every day. Hey, whatever gets the job done, right? Well, I mean, that's exactly how it is. But yes, well, anyway, how's the, we were talking about, I think, the updating your room. And then we're like, wait a minute. The oh, you're on here. holidays as well, Ben, aren't you? You're on, you're on uni holidays. Yeah, yeah. So I managed to get the um, the uh, final exams are all done. Um, everything's all finished there. So I've got to wait for marks to come back. I'm fairly confident I'll pass. It's just a matter by how much. Um, so hopefully I'm starting to keep my five. So I've got, I think I'm punching a five GPA or 5.2. So hopefully I can keep that up. Um, I'll be pretty happy with that going into into second and third year or the back end of second and third year. Um, but yeah, so Dalton and Isabel started their Australia tour. So it opened up the spare room and uh, captivated and found an office space. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Why not? Got um, for anyone that can see in the back that does decide to watch it, the uh, whiteboards are already full and there are a lot of plans on there. So I did not actually get, give myself much of a holiday period. He's going to start getting like the to. glass textures and writing on the glass. Writing on the mirrors. <laughs> it's actually just dick and balls. There's a whole bunch of different ways of drawing dick and balls. That's all it is. Just you you're, just it fucking, you're just absolutely nuts and crazy. And you're just drawing nothing all over the all over these whiteboards. Just nothingness. Like the butterfly like, effect or something. Like on Superbad where he's like... Yeah, I was going to say he's drawing, drawing like... He's got a fucking yeah. container of dick drawings. That's me. That's what I got back here. Uh, man, yeah. some of those dicks in that... In the, they're actually pretty good drawings. They're good quality. <laughs> Hey, the, the detail and the vascularity. The detail wish, and the vascularity. Are like, I, I wish, wish I had, had that, that vascularity on stage. <laughs> <laughs> what? In That's your the definition the of dick skin lean. <laughs> but anyway. Um, what about you? So, yeah, how's, How are you? Me? Nothing. I just had my like scans this morning on my kidneys. Um, everything's all good, it seems. Just the, <laughs> I love how downplay know. that was. It's, just, all big, scans on my I don't want, it's not a big deal in that. I think people freak out when they start to hear like, oh my God, he's got like, there's growths somewhere. And it's kind of like, oh my well, God, you've got renal failure. You're pissing blood. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's quite normal to have cysts grow 
um, on certain organs and stuff. And usually you don't detect them because they don't cause any issues. So you never get them looked at. And it was, I was having an MRI on my pancreas and they found a, like a weird little growth on my kidney. But again, cysts growing on kidneys is quite common. Um, and I had that checked and they're just like, so yeah, the listeners just... don't worry. He's fine. He's not going to die. He's, he's, yeah, no, they're, I, everyone's sort of like, oh, you're good. I'm like, yeah, man. Like, I feel like if it was a problem, I would have had like actual kidney problems as well. Like, I would have been feeling like, you know, issues, you know, pee <laughs> well, or something blood. like that. Yeah, <laughs> shit like that. And, you know, probably oh, well, would come up in all the blood tests good that I've had. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not worried. I've never been worried. It's kind of like, uh, cool. Like, it's an irregular growth. I, I don't care. I'm still going to, even if they said, oh my God, something bad. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm going to take all the drugs and just get swollen. Like, send <laughs> Look, it. Fucking I'm send fill, it. I'm gonna no, nothing is off basket. limits. If I if I had like something like that, nothing's off limits. Just fucking go. <laughs> got Ten years to get his jacket. Alrighty, off. Joe. We have two years left of life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, do? Joe. We have three months. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> three months to grow. No, three months to live. Live. Yeah. So use, use it all. Pretty much, just fucking sin. Oh, then we would everything. be pushing for season A, then, right? Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, fuck it. The, only, the, the closest comp will be ICN. Fuck it, I'm doing it. <laughs> well, it's not going to matter. You're not going to make their hall of shame anyway. Because you're dead. <laughs> exactly right. Who cares? Let's be let's be real. Do they really have a hall of shame? Oh, that too. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. To <laughs> Man, I tell so, you, yeah. some of the ICN shows I've been to, especially the last one, there was this fucking Indian dude. His nipples on here were this long. I shit you not. His nipple, it looked like he was going to start lactating on stage. Please tell me. And he still won the division. Please tell me how the fuck on the judging criteria you can get up there and win with Gano in a natural show. You know what? You know what? You know, oh, yeah, what trips yeah, me out? That's what it was. What trips me out with ICN is the amount of categories they have. I just don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I don't get. Ah. It. I, 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 don't, I don't understand. And then how people can win like seven categories. I'm like the angles <laughs> are forming in my brain right now. Yeah, you, you, know, you know what? You know how and why they do it because they love dollar them. dollar bills, yo. Yeah. Well, so it's like, do you have to pay entry fees for yeah. every yeah. single category? So you can pay your in? first, Correct. your first one. I think it's similar to IFBB, but a bit yeah. worse. The first ones you, you start up costs, like that's your prior, like you pick your priority yeah. like division. And yeah, then yeah. subsequently from that, it goes down to, I think like, let's say it's 150 bucks for your starting yeah. division. It yeah, goes yeah, down yeah. to like hundred bucks per other one you do. So per person, you might be getting someone doing like, five, I've seen one guy do five different divisions in the same day, win them all, but he would have spent 700 bucks. Give or yeah, take. He's right. living the dream. <laughs> I'm fucking killing all for, it. All for, $5, <laughs> all for $5 trophies. Yeah, I was gonna say like, fuck that. Like, why would you do five freaking categories? Who cares? Do one. Like, but the thing to me, well, the thing to me is I'm that doing the same three in the first, mm. in the first. But it's only yeah, because what, I'm. What are you doing? You're doing classic bodybuilding. Classic, I'll, I'll do the main division. Will be classic open for yeah. class C. Then it'll be yeah. classic physique novice, classic physique first time. Yeah, yeah. That's me, me and Dean had a little bit of a discussion about whether or not I do first timer, but I feel like I want to. So, and I'm eligible to. So. Fuck it, why not? And under nineties bodybuilding. <laughs> so we were gonna do that. So we we're gonna scrap the first timer and do yeah, under nineties yeah, bodybuilding. bodybuilding. Fuck, yeah. we still may. We still may. Who knows? Who knows? Do it. It's the only way Let's you're gonna it. show your lats. It's the only way you're gonna show your lat spread, bro. Otherwise, I gotta show the lat spread off, right? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That's, that's, I don't. I don't get that one with classic. I, I love classic, but I don't get the idea that there's no lat spread in classic guys. Yeah, it's because, annoying. Because Franco had some of the greatest bat wings of all time, and he spread them. So it doesn't make yeah. sense to me that. Well, I, I was saying to Chris, like you know, when they say most muscular, you just do a back spread. It's just like, well, it's subjective. subjective. You, you, your most you muscular said, shot. Yeah, your <laughs> most muscular. This is my most muscular. My back is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> look at it. All you chumps at the front. Well, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's showing you know fucking double biceps and all this shit pecs. Like, nah, bro. It's all about the back. No one cares about the rest. But yeah, like the, the the part that the part that confuses me is how how someone can do five different, not just different like first time or second time. Uh, weight divisions but five different categories and yeah. win because yeah, yeah. each one well, of the those criteria have, right yeah each one of those should have a subjective judging criteria and a, a subjective like shape that they look for that ticks off those boxes right like it, it, to be winning all five means that there's not and that is the annoying part with the icn is there's no i mean it's not going to get into an icn bashing contest but there's no that sometimes across the divisions especially in victoria there's no consistency with some of the judging which is yeah. annoying considering other I suppose states, you know, like Queensland, for example, the judging is very good. Whereas, like, it just seems to be Victoria where it isn't fantastic. Yeah, fair. I don't want to say no. too much because I have clients competing in the ICN. So, oh, it's it's a good for like, <laughs> the ICN. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, it's the pinnacle of Australia for natural bodybuilding, but it's just yeah. it's just Victoria. 
they make it hard to yeah. be completely respectful of them when it's just dumb shit is like, yeah. you know, fuck, like you've got, you know, whatever bikini transformation pageantry division. And it's just literally getting some poor woman up there who's lost the most amount of weight. I was like, how do she you doesn't even look like she trains kind of thing? Yeah, it was like how do you how do you reward that? Like, what about the other 10 women who lost just as much, but like not as much? And I was like, how do you how do you, how's that a win? What do you yeah. what do you what are you criterion that on? Oh there's too you, many categories. There's yeah. fucking way too many categories. I need to cut it back to just the, the bare basics. <laughs> it erased me when they all call themselves wow. bodybuilders. It's you know like, what the annoying part is? Is you go to a show and it's like you just see the same people again and again yeah, and again and yeah, again. And it's like, yeah. I saw this guy on stage like two minutes yeah. ago and he's back up here again in a different division. It's like, yeah. this time he's wearing not, yeah. shorts or jeans. This time he's wearing shorts or jeans. It's just the same thing again and again and again. So there's, there's actually a jeans division. That one uh, got me. I was like, come on, that's what? a bit much. What the hell's a jeans division? It is literally streetwear and jeans. Mm. So topless with jeans. No, I think it's like a singlet or something. God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. You're going to get okay. a in that division, aren't you? That's, that's, that's oh, all yeah. calling, Ben. 100%. Yeah. Well, he's going he's to wear, 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 wear a wife beater. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a good one. Just a $5 blonde one from fucking Target. Yeah, traditional blue, <laughs> like... Gonna get old school with it. <laughs> walking with a stubby. <laughs> yeah, walking... <laughs> Jeans, not, not, even can, not even can. It's a proper bottle. It's a bottle yeah. in there as well. Not a can. What's in je- jeans, thongs, wife beater? Hey, yeah. Mate, that's first. Buy it out. Get a cobber. Sign me up, mate. Yeah. There we go. Give him first place. <laughs> just, just look over to the judge. There you go, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the old finger whistle. Yeah. <laughs> finger guns. <laughs> I'll buy you a beer after. <laughs> a little wink and a whistle in there. That's it. All right. uh, what, what are we diving what into? Are, what are we talking about today? What do you want to do? We're talking about fad dieting and fad fads. <laughs> fad, 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 fad. Too well, many times. What was, it, what was the thing we were talking about last week? We probably should just start it off. <laughs> that thing we're talking about should be a, a good segment for each week, but we just never polished it off. About, I don't remember the name, but you made it, wasn't it? <sighs> something like that. Wasn't it just, wasn't it about like something dumb shit you've heard in the industry, like send it through and we'll talk yeah. about it? Yeah, but we didn't. Put we, that in. The we, didn't, we didn't blow up. <laughs> well, I'm the only one putting up questions these days. You two do, do nothing. Yeah, look, I'm, 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 I'm busy drawing dicks on the back of my wall here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how much time that takes up. You're busy pretending to look busy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Isn't that isn't that 90 of success? That's yes. online coaching, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't started selling Bitcoin yet. <laughs> That's pretty right. N- NF- N- NFTs. NFTs as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't finish off my professional career, so I went off into NFTs and um coaching. Yeah, <laughs> life coaching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we were talking about fad diets, fad. Yeah, fad training. diets, dumb fads to take off the industry, and dumb shit that people get hooked on. And first one comes know. to your mind. What do you got? What's recent? What's you know how they go around the traps? It's like it'll be keto for a while, then it'll be something else, <laughs> yeah. it'll be something else. There's paleo. someone who's got to make money somewhere who just what is it at the moment? Trend. What's the fad diet at the moment? I, I feel like it was keto, and now it's starting to like. Bridge into other things. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't, I don't deal with people that do fad shit. So it's kind of like that's, you know, out of my uh, scope these days. Cause it's like when we're working, you know, for like gen with gen pop plants, like at an RBT or whatever, it's kind of like you'll hear about the fad stuff because people will be like, ah, oh, like what about this? What about that? Now it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't deal with those people. So mm-hmm. couldn't tell you. But I mean, what are the common ones? Like paleo, keto. Yeah, paleo, carnivore, keto. Yeah, carnivore. Um, I think it's one of the popular ones because when Andy's on a lot of the calls, I think keto is one of the ones that are in at the moment. A lot of people are trying keto. They're cutting carbs. They're just, that's the main thing that they do. They're cutting carbs. Well, yeah, cutting I mean, that, that's probably the biggest one, right? Like low carb dieting, whether it's, you know, I guess specific. They, they keto think it's keto. They keto, think yeah. it's keto, but it's not actually keto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, that's probably the most popular one, keto dieting. Um being a low carb. Why don't we address what actual ketosis is before we actually get to what people think that it is versus what they're actually doing. And let's just trip them all out by saying, if you eat 500 grams of carbs, you can still be in ketosis. Who would have thought? Um, <laughs> that's always, that's always funny to speak to people They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, if you understand how your, um, how ketones actually work, but um, that's a different story, I guess. Well, maybe it's the same story. All right. Well, who wants to go first? What is ketosis? Dive in boys. Who's the most? Well, the 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 uh, what's the word? Bio freak over here would be Scaff. So take us off. I always have to answer these questions. I get bored answering these all the time. Oh, I have a specialty in a field. Oh no. Oh. 
what is Only... ketosis? Basically, you're putting your body in a place where fat oxidization is probably its best or primary fuel source purely because you're not intaking its actual fuel source being glycogen or in other words, carbohydrates. It's probably the best way to do it. Your body produces this thing called ketones. Ketones is what effectively pulls fat and uses it and oxidizes fat to then burn energy and ATP to uh, perform human function effectively. It's probably the most simple way I could put it. I mean, yeah, that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty so, much it. Yeah. So the reason that people think it works so well is because typically what they'll do is they'll cut out a significant amount of carbohydrates. And obviously with water, you know, a lot of with, with uh, carbohydrates is a, a big portion of water that's stored with that. And they'll get this massive whoosh off of weight on the scale. And they'll be like, oh man, this is fucking awesome. I'm losing weight. I'm losing fat. I'm torching fat. When in reality, it's just a fluctuation of uh, just basically water that they'd lost from the carbohydrates. And then instantly, as soon as they put them back in, boom, go back up. And then a lot of people, what they actually think is, is ketosis is not. They may just start cutting out carbs, but increase you know, their fat and, and protein intake exponentially. They're still eating you know, probably at least 100 grams of carbs a day and still thinking they're in ketosis when in reality, it's a lot, lot less. And there's a multitude of systems there too that are at play. Like when, like you said, understanding that intracellular glycogen storage, sorry, intramuscular glycogen storage leads to intracellular hydration. So in and of that, you have fluid that's retained in the, in the glycogen cell, inside the muscle cell. So pulling out that and cutting out carbs obviously going to lead to weight loss. But in doing so, as you've said, people then start to consume higher amounts of protein, which is going to lead to things like, although you might be in lower carbohydrate states, the body is going to move into states like neoglycogenesis. Yes. Yes. Glucone and basically, yeah. Glucone yeah. Glucone <laughs> and basically, utilize uh, proteins or muscle, the amino acids of the muscle, and convert that into glucose and carbohydrates for the primary efficiency of providing energy to the body. So there's still these other ways that we're going to go about it. And people are like, yeah, it's fucking sick. Yeah, you're either underperforming, you're under fucking fueling, and then the body is is I guess not capitalizing, what's the word, uh, compensating elsewhere by taking from things that you need, like muscle tissue to fuel it. Yeah. Well, what happens? The Performance shits the bed. Yeah. Well, In that's the thing. A lot, a lot of feel people like trash. Yeah. People, a lot of people don't understand that, especially it always depends on the goal, right? But let's say again, cause we're gym bros and it's what we do. So getting jacked is the goal. Um, in the pursuit of jackedness, like understanding the carbohydrates is your primary fuel source purely because it's the fastest acting fuel source. So it's the fastest to come in and also the fastest to be used. So we can balance and offset a lot of these um, energy abundant processes by using or utilizing carbohydrates. When we don't give carbohydrates, like Ben just said, your body is going to go to this process we call gluconeogenesis, where it breaks down protein and converts it to uh, glucagon. It basically turns it into glycogen. It turns it into sugar. Mm -hmm. Where does that primarily come from? Carbohydrates. Now, if you're only taking in the minimum amount of protein, whether it be 1.62 grams per kilo, which we know when carbs are at a decent level, it can do what it needs to do in muscle building. However, take away carbohydrates and still only consuming two grams. That two grams now is worth much less because it now has to be used for many other processes in the body that carbohydrates would be useful. So you don't have that muscle sparing effect. So you now you need to move your protein intake to maybe three grams, four grams per kilo if you're going to be doing this low carb to or no carb dieting, just because you need to fuel your workouts and your body and you know all its biological processes and biochemical processes via glucose or gluconeogenesis. So instead, fuck that, just eat some carbs. <laughs> But then even dumber than that is you get people who think because they've cut out carbs as because they're either uneducated or unaware of the energy inverse outbalance and then macronutrient makeup, you start to get people who just think consuming large amounts of fats. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm consuming fats. So it's going to help the body start to prioritize breaking down fat stores. And it's like, uh, not doing that. You can still be in a surplus being in ketosis and just over consuming fats. You start yeah. adding slabs of butter or cheeses and like you start adding things like, extra bits of bacon and shit like that into your nuts. Like the, the, the yeah, because, sheer volume to only make like a hundred, like, sorry, a, a thousand calories from nuts is ridiculous how easy it is to eat. But people just think, well, it's healthy food or it's saturated fat. So it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. You can still go into surplus and store fat 
when you're consuming in ketosis. Well, that, that, that's the thing there because it's still the overarching principle of energy in and energy out. That doesn't change. And as you know, unfortunate as it is, like when people are like, not all calories are equal. It's kind of like, well, calories are simply just a measure. Like they're not anything else than yeah. a, a unit of measure. That's what it is. I hate so when calories- people apply fucking emotion <clears throat> or like uh, behavioral yeah, so- traits to neutral yeah. content. Like, well, like, as we've talked about before, body it's maths. It's yeah, literally exactly. maths. It's like you can't say one plus one doesn't equal two because it fucking does. Yeah. So, but, yeah. so this is how energy works and how the unit of energy being a calorie works. It's a number. It's a figure. Mm-hmm. It's never. It's neither right nor wrong. It's. It is what it is. So, yeah. yeah with the food that you eat to make up that calorie intake isn't the same. Yes, I agree. But to say that a calorie isn't equal or isn't the same, a calorie is just a simple unit of measure. That's saying like centimeters aren't the same. It's like, are you fucking serious? That's a, it's a fucking unit of measure. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when people take in this extra fat content, they still don't realize that your overall calorie intake is still what governs what it is that you're trying to do, whether it be, you know, cut weight, gain weight, whatever it is, right? But at the same time, fat being more abundant in calories per gram, meaning <laughs> you're going to have to eat less fat yeah. to get more calories in so in compared to carbohydrates and protein so it's kind of like well you're over you're going over the top with all this fat intake not understanding that majority of the time fat as unfortunate as this is basically gets stored as fat most of the time if it's not being used for energy so you're consuming high amounts of protein which will probably be first in the hierarchy system of what your body uses as energy like it'll use fat to a point but then that's also very taxing and it was just going to turn around and be like, okay, well, we've done that. Now we're just going to go to protein and break down protein. You end up rendering yourself catabolic. When you're chasing anabolism, you don't want to be catabolic. Catabolic means you're using energy like a lot. And it means it has to grab it from either fats or protein, which takes more energy, which makes it longer, which is why you end up being feeling like shit mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of just going, hey, here's some carbohydrates. Oh, I feel great. So funny yeah, about this whole thing, right, is the fact that we have a, a fantastic energetic pathway, which is, you know, um, storing things as uh, glycogen in terms of like assimilation of carbohydrates, which are the primary fuel source, like you said, for every single, you know, I suppose, um, you know, anaerobic type of activity that we do within the gym setting. And you want to cut them out. Why the <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. do you want to do that? Like it and just your brain makes no sense at all. On- yeah. yeah, and your, your, your brain, brain and fun- organs also function on glucose. So glucose. <laughs> like it's a primary fucking energy. Why source. are you going to go around a secondary pathway when you have a fantastic primary pathway that you can be using straight away? It just makes no sense. I hate the, I hate the argument people make about like the brain functions of fats or fat. I, I think better on fats. So like, yeah, the brain still needs energy. It still needs its best availability of energy and oxygen. And you're just that goes as far that. as like, okay, we may just we may have fats in the first meal of the day. Because you do feel yeah. a little bit better, and then, but it's not really like you're gonna have no fats for the rest, or no uh, carbohydrates yeah. for the rest of the day. The next meal yeah. is gonna have carbohydrates, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. around your training time. So yeah, and I think the the confusion is also a lot of people, depending on the type of client or the type of person it is, if they're obviously you know hardcore type trainers, if they're sort of that training for mental health, getting out of their own way. It's part of their routine, you know, an hour in the gym just to help them for the day. Like very two different target markets, right? Two different types of people to train. Now, for those that train really hard and like, you know, really push the boundaries of their training will potentially need more carbohydrates purely because they're going to burn through more glycogen intra-training and also post-training in the recovery phase, right? Those that don't train that hard obviously don't require as much carbohydrates. So I think that gets lost in translation a lot in that your carbohydrate needs are probably not going to be as much as you think, especially if you're more gen pop than you are if you're, I guess, the intermediate to advanced athlete, athlete we'll call it, whether it be, you know, strongman powerlifting, bodybuilding, whatever it is, or even, you know, field based sports that probably require the most out of everybody mm-hmm. and probably take eat the least, to be honest. But, um, you know, it's a whole nother tangent. But like understanding your actual requirements of the three macros and understanding that, you know, you can still lose or gain weight just by simply modulating carbohydrates and using like a carb cycle approach, which you know, I think a lot of us do and makes it much, much easier to um, track and keep on top of. Yeah. That's the, it's the easiest thing to, I find modify with people is just once you have your, I think we talked about last week, once you have like your, your bare minimum of fats, very rarely do you need to play around with it unless it becomes about getting in a, uh, uh, more comfortable ways of eating, but modifying someone's carbohydrate intake is the easiest way to just fluctuate changes or just, sorry, control changes and just make adjustments. 
like pull 50 this week, see how you respond. Are we still performing well? Are we still, are you still feeling full? Are you, you know, is weight going up or down? No. Okay. We can pull in maybe another 50 next week and see how that goes. Generally I might wait two weeks to see how, like to make sure someone's adherent and actually ticking off the box of boxes to see how their response actually goes. But every, every two weeks, if you look at that and it's not moving, cool, pull down another 50. But when you start playing with fats and you start playing with protein, it becomes more complicated. Carbs are just a simple fuel source that you can just up or down. Yeah. Exactly right. Because they're non-essential as well, right? So they're the easiest thing to cut away at first, first exactly and foremost, right. which is I why think I think the... we probably all keep fats towards a minimum regardless, right? Like even, I suppose they're going to go a lot lower during a deficit as your relative body weight starts to come down. But even in, even in a gaining phase, like I don't take fats that high. Like I'm no. talking one gram per kilogram in terms of like, you know, your fat intake absolute maximum. Yeah. What yeah. would you guys say is like the maximum that uh, like threshold that you would take? And the only reason yeah. I'd increase past that is if that individual needs to increase the palatability of some of their foods uh, yeah. and so they can get more food in if they're struggling yeah. with appetite. That's literally it. Yeah. It's yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Bang on like 0.5 to one gram per kilo of body weight for, for males. And I might touch it a little bit over and go to the 1.2 to 1.3 for females only because anecdotally they seem to metabolize and utilize fats a little bit more efficiently than what I see in my male clients. Again, I haven't really looked at any of the research to back that up. That's why I use the word anecdotally. Um, it just seems to be one of those things where they can handle it. The other thing is obviously with females, a lot of their hormone regu regulation is yeah. uh, dictated by fat. So, you know, having the fats a bit higher for the females, even in a deficit, like I won't go really past below, you know, 0.75 per, per kilo. Um, I, I won't, venture too far low and if i do it's only for a very short period of time um purely from a hormonal perspective and a health perspective yeah yeah i agree i think the i think the i think the hang-up gets from people is when they 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 get the result from cutting out carbs too like they they start to create an internal bias because hey this worked for me so i'm going to tell all my friends about it and then and an we'll emotional be, attachment and then yeah, they're telling yeah. everyone and then, oh, yeah. carbs are the devil don't lose yeah, 100%. I, I cut carbs out and, that, and i started losing weight and then literally the yeah Literally all it was, was you, instead of having those extra four to 500 calories a day from the carbs you're using, you just pulled out carbs and then well, you already perform like shit. So your actual deficit probably decreased because you moved less. But at the same time, you've pulled out fucking four, five, six, 700 ca uh, calories extra a day, just in carbohydrates. And you might only be eating three meals a day. And then you go, oh, it turned out it was carbs. And as we said before, really you just created a deficit and you just limited your food selection options. And by completely restricting carbohydrates because of sugar, you're, you're already in creating a deficit in your diet without even meaning to. You just, you've pulled carbs out and to you, that's the devil and that's the solution. Reality is you just created a calorie deficit that was unnecessary when you could have modulated fats a bit more, probably increased protein and still had some decent carbohydrates. But- that's where I think the one of the key issues comes from is they, they, they create a confirmation bias by doing the thing, getting a result for them, becoming so emotionally invested in it. And then like, yeah, carbs is the devil. This guy said the fucking insulin, insulin resistance model and all this sort of shit. It's <laughs> like carb insulin. Uh, 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 my favorite. My favorite. Fuck. And then you tell him, you know, if you eat, you drink a protein shake, your insulin spikes. Oh my God. <laughs> that stores as fat, right? Yeah, 100%. You watch their faces freak out and you're like, what? It's like, yeah. But the other beauty to carbohydrates that I think a lot of people forget both, again, more so in a growth phase, I guess, more than a cutting phase. However, it is protein sparing. Yeah. Meaning it'll allow protein to do what it naturally needs to do again in the pursuit of getting jacked. Um, you know, repair muscle. <laughs> Whereas the carbohydrates take care of basically every other function in terms of fueling every other function that needs to be done. And it just lets protein do what it needs to do. Now, if your carbs are too low, it's going to take energy from the protein. And it's going to, then that's when we have gluconeogenesis. And it's going to be like, okay, well, I need more glucose to function and do what I need to do. Because a lot of the time also, it being a faster uh, acting fuel source, a lot of biochemical processes that we have require fast um, acting energy. Like, produ like production of ATP, for example, is heavily glucose dominant. It is mm -hmm. not used in fats. Like trying to use fats to produce ATP hits a blunt, it has this blunting effect at some point. And that's when you start running into all these problems where you're not getting better in the gym with your lifts. You start to feel like shit keto flu or keto cold or whatever it is was a thing because of, you know, potential ATP production or lack thereof. And then immunity dropping, like so many shit things to do with keto. Like it's good maybe for a short-term fat loss phase. You know, I, I use it a lot for short-term fat loss, like extreme dieting, like mm -hmm. protein modified effectively. It's what it is basically. 
The other thing is with keto, understanding that traditional keto is literally 20 grams of carbs per day. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I have 100 grams. I'm still in keto. So I was saying before like, where it's like people just have 100 stick. grams. It's just like, I pissed yeah, on a stick. People, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, like your key, that's not traditional keto dieting. Keto dieting is 20 grams of carbs per day. So but that's that's like that's human nature, right? Like we take something that's maybe worked or we've we've heard of and just amplify and exaggerate it way too far. Like the, the original basis of ketosis was neurological disorders and trying to help with weight loss in hospital patients. Yeah, epilepsy, and, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was supposed to reduce symptoms of epilepsy um mm. due to increasing fat oxidization and increasing um was it fat still uh, fats in the brain? Maybe like trying to something like, yeah something like, like that. Um, yeah. But and also was to assist with weight loss in those patients and try and like increase yeah. some health markers. That was like a two week window. Like I'm um, far mm-hmm. as I can recall, I'm pretty sure this, uh, the the purpose was like a two to four weeks max um, yeah. before declines in like functions and stuff kicked in. Where it was like okay, like let's go back now. You that's what we got the point of before. And then some fuckheads just gone. I know I'm gonna give that to populations of people that don't need it. And then yeah. everyone's like, yeah, I lost fucking 20 kilos on keto. I lost 20, 30 kilos on keto. Like, oh man, no, you just- You know almost what it is? It's like, if your diet has a name, it's probably fucking stupid. Yeah, I, I agree. Tribalism, tribalism, <laughs> tribalism agree. to a fact. Tribalism yeah. to a fact. Yeah, like the, the other ones that are always fun, like we we're talking about like paleo, but you know, one that we were, we we're like sitting there, we we're like-, like Paleo's oh, died well, a bit now. Yeah, but remember how we're trying to work Thank out, God. like what are, the, what are the fads? Man, juice cleansers. Uh, Bro, how, how did we forget that? <laughs> like, like we're end of the cancel head. Like, I need to detoxify and you know get on this eight day juice cleanse. Hey, bro, why have you got like, that lemon in your water? Oh, you know, it's, yeah. just, it's detoxifying my system because you know, you know yeah. apple cider vinegar is really, really good for you. Apparently, like, I need to de- I need to detox the thing that does the detox in my body. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. It's just like for fuck's sake. Who would have so, thought we have a couple of organs that do a very good job of that to keep us alive? Otherwise, we would actually die. Yeah, in but, case those are wondering, your it's your kidneys and your liver. Just but imagine thinking serious. that imagine thinking that we have organs that shut off or don't work because you didn't drink lemon water. Like, imagine <laughs> thinking that, like there's literally an off that switch must on, be it. That's on a it. major. I didn't have my lemon organ. water in my, in my and the body's like, like get today. Yeah, but I woke up this morning. My body's like, you know what? Fuck you! you didn't give me lemon water today. I'm not working. You're yeah, not gonna get liver. You, you woke up today and your your liver decided to choose war. <laughs> yeah, legit. You know, today you're pissing blood. Fuck you. This is what you get for not See, giving me on my the lemon weekend, water. I would just fucking pound in cocktails like they're going out of fashion. Yeah, then worry about the liver then or the apple cider vinegar then. That that will save them. The apple cider vinegar will save them. <laughs> Anecdotally, I, I sometimes felt good when I would do things like just like ice cold cucumber water just because it was like, it was just refreshing. But yeah. that's also just like placebo of me having just like ice cold water. Yeah, it's, and- it's like dropping a lemon slice in a cold glass of Coke. You know how yeah, nice exactly. that is? Exactly. It is refreshing as fuck. <laughs> yeah, and you just feel good on it, but it's like it's not like it's doing anything. But no. in the in these heads, people are just like, man, I put in some spinach. I put in like, surely you drink that and go, I'm this tastes like shit. There's got to be something better to do here. That's, yeah, it's just you know, like people want to jump on these fad things, and it's just because you know some big note people are like, this really works, and it's like cool. It's like, it doesn't do anything. It's like apple cider vinegar being a big one. You know, we, we can see from the evidence that it might help with blood sugar regulation. Maybe. Maybe. That's, maybe. Ma- maybe. 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 Some That's people it works. Maybe. Yeah. Some people it might work. Some people it might not. Cool. Like the research says that everything else that people think that apple cider, apple cider, apple vinegar, whatever it is called, apple cider vinegar does is horrendous. It doesn't do anything. It does nothing but rot your teeth. <laughs> like it is bad for the enamel in your mouth. <laughs> Stop <laughs> fucking doing it. Like you are just ruining your mouth for no reason whatsoever. Like if you're at least going to ruin your mouth, have something worth ruining your mouth over. Max, Pepsi Max. Yeah, Coke. <laughs> like fuck, soft drink. Like not. It's like ironic. It's ironic that things will define as toxic or poisonous, and then just find something else that's even dumber and drink that instead, but ends up doing worse things. And it's just yeah, like. like- Come or in. like people people think an alkaline water like does anything, and it's like <laughs> I put a rock in my water, and now it's clean. P- people not understanding like the, I pissed in my water, the pH, and now it's the, the yellow. The pH. Yeah, you can you can't change the pH of your blood, and if you did, you'd die. Yeah. Just saying, it the, like the the, the, <laughs> the body has homeostasis for a reason. We have these <laughs> spectrums and these like these these parameters that we live in for well, the an feedback obvious loops. The We're complex, loops. sophisticated, advanced creatures that have evolved over like a hundred thousand years to be here, so that we don't die from things. And the bo- and people are just like, nah, I think I know. It's better like, how much control do you really think we have over those? Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I had, even, I had... even like peak week for a show, we don't have that much control over our variables. Like we can, yeah. we're like, we're not just a crossing guard. We're like, all right, carbs go here, fluid goes here. It doesn't work that way. It yeah. really doesn't. 
Yeah, that, that's a, that's a fun one for me. Seeing how much people try and like overemphasize the, what they can do in peak weeks and then end up uh, fucking uh, themselves. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, magic. I've not coached someone a peak week yet, so I'm not going to pretend that I've nailed it. But at the same time, people throwing in random shit, pulling out random things, deciding sodium has to come right down and fucking water has to do this. Carbs, no, we've got to we've got to wait till this time. And and then there's just like shit, like they'll introduce like burgers. Like, oh, I missed my peak because the food was like off. And, no, dickhead. You threw in fucking no random matter, food. Yeah. No matter which way you look at it, if the athlete's not ready two weeks before the show, guaranteed yeah. regardless of what you do with a peak is not going to do well. Yeah. It's almost like the more conditioned an athlete is, the more ready they are to take on a peak in terms yeah. of like, you know, glycogen loading and well, super compensation. Well, yeah, they're just, they're, they're so much more sensitive at that point, yeah. right? The more yeah. sensitive like you, you, you get, you can't, the better you're going to be. You're going to enhance a fullness look or something like that when you're already still four weeks out. Like that's not something, you're, you're, you're already full. I know, I spilled you over. Been less like, full. bro, you're still fat. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> why why <laughs> you do you think you spilled spill, over? You're just called, not lean that, enough. Yeah, that's, that's called fat. fat. That's, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like all these weird little things. And it's like, like paleo diet, like, What's the other guy? The liver king. That's the one. Oh, Fucking, yeah. oh bro. He's intense. He is intense. Man, eating like raw liver and like goat's balls and shit. And it's kind of I like- saw him, I saw one the other day. It came up on my uh, Instagram explore and he was scooping out bone marrow from like goat's hoof. Yeah, and, and, I was like, and, and then he's talking like, about how bad, how like checking that cholesterol is a bad marker to check in relation to heart health and that there are other better what? markers. Not, not, yeah. Like the other markers he suggested to check- He's right. Check them as well. But cholesterol not, is still a really good one. It's not a mutually exclusive thing. No, it kind of like cholesterol is kind of still important to measure heart health. And he's like, he doesn't know what his cholesterol is. And it's just like, yeah, and you should probably check funny, because- What's also funny about that, just on, on top of that, because it made me think back to like the paleo as well, because obviously, you know, I suppose some of those foods with the bone marrow and all that shit would be classified mm. as uh, paleo food as well. Do you know what the average life expectancy was in the paleo? 35. Yeah. yeah. Like, like what, what 30 you, years what? old and then you die. <laughs> yeah. Probably from like, like a We live longer now shit. for yeah. a reason, right? Yeah. Like it's it's not the food you're consuming that's going to fucking reduce your life or <laughs> and, extend your life. Bro, yeah. And it's just like this. It's modern medicine. Dude, and, then, is a hit. and then this dude is jacked on steroids as well. Like he's. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of yeah. like, like, like what, uh. hold on. You're, you're telling people to eat like this ancestral diet of raw everything. The steroids you're taking aren't exactly part of that era. Like they no, were there. They're, they're, in, he jerked off they're all paleo. <laughs> he just found a bull and jerked it off and just swallowed that. And that was like, he just, it, that's it, he even, even then, it's still not going to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, like, doing it wrong. Just so you know, yeah. bull <laughs> semen does not enhance testosterone. So don't go and try that. <laughs> Why? You should have told someone to try it and let us know. Anecdotally. <laughs> so, anecdotally, yeah, Ben yeah. knows. That's, where we, that's <laughs> how we know. Yeah, that's, how ben, that's how Ben gets Jack. I didn't um, recover from spinal surgery for procedures. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know all these weird fads and then the people endorsing these stupid fads and you're like bruh like there's always money look, behind look, it. yeah look always. deeper as, as to why they're promoting what it is oh, that they're promoting people who went after what what my health like i remember we were working at, when we we're working at um nutrition warehouse and there were people these customers were coming after watching like what my health and game changer and shit and i think it was on oh, game changer it was on it game changer the basic level of personal biases inflicting this movie and they even got say, arnold on there bro they even got yeah. arnold on there but yeah. the, and then there was the one it was a, it was a game changer what's my health where it was like the guy tried to say that um uh vegan did xyz and he has a vegetarian or vegan retreat oh yeah that was runs, um, uh, game changers game changers yeah, and I was like, yeah the guy who endorsed it was vegan and had his own com- protein uh supplement company yeah and everyone's um, like, and was, like bro you have to acknowledge this like, yeah it was biased no, heavily no, biased there's, there's no issue there yeah, what? my favorite one. My favorite one out of that was the they did the blood samples. Was it the blood samples of fat? Oh and how much, yeah. This when you when you eat bullshit. when you eat the salad or when you eat the um was it the minced meat the Mexican minced meat or whatever it was like a burrito or something, and then they showed how much fat was in it. And it's kind of like you know if you had a salad with a bit of olive oil, it would do the same thing. It's kind of like <laughs> you really need they to really cherry pick whatever yeah. they were fucking doing with that. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was very. It was also super funny as well. There's literally a whole aisle in the supermarket if you walk through that preys on the halo health effect. So for those who don't know what the halo health effect is, it's basically you see something as being sugar free, you instantly yeah. think, oh, this item must be the better than this be, item. This item, and then you, yeah. you oh yeah, but like you, you pick up a piece of sugar free chocolate versus normal chocolate, and you think, oh, this must be better for me. I can have twenty times the amount. At the, if you look at the nutrient profile, like you know, often it's the opposite. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the halo health effect is real. It is real. Yeah. That whole they'll, they'll do like, they'll do things like subbing out carbohydrates, like oh, it's ninety nine percent low sugar or low carbs, and then they've just jacked it up with fats or something like that. And you're just like, 
man, like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then someone will down like 30 of them thinking well, it's healthier so I can have it instead yeah. of just sticking to the one thing that they should have eaten and enjoyed that and tracked it. And then all of a sudden they're just gaining weight, but, but it's gluten-free. Cool. Gluten's in the calorie. That's actually funny. You mentioned yeah. that people think, Oh, it's healthy. It must mean I can consume as much of this as I like. How funny oh, is that? You know, it's like so understand. many fucking chicks in that on Instagram that make up their uh, Ben's favorite time of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's thotorama, thot- thotorometer. <laughs> yeah, but look, it's not it's not just them, but there is a correlation between them and producing dumb shit like they are massive um, culprits though. My <laughs> guilt-free raw vegan fucking whole food option nut seed fucking raw treat brownies that have like a thousand calories to them per a tiny 10 mil square yeah. instead of just going to have some brownie. The easiest way, if you're going to, if you want to do the whole vegan treats and eat, you, you can eat this as much as you like and you will not get fat. You may die from being drowned, but ice cubes, just go nuts. Go, go crazy. Just have, True ice cubes all day. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. Short just of that. Literally sit there. Just <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, Short it, of that, it, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. The funniest thing is too, like they'll go to all this trouble to make these treats. A paddle pop has 90 calories. <laughs> go have a fucking yeah. paddle pop. Uh, have a box. Paddle don't pop. Make, so, well, didn't you know that's so bad for you, Ben? You don't spend four pop. hours making yeah. these shit house like You can't eat natural... paddle pops, bro. They're so bad yeah. for you. That's fair. You can't that's eat one. You, you have to eat a po- you have to eat a box of paddle pops. Otherwise, yeah, once you happen. start though, you gotta do all 12 and then you can't stop. Hmm. Or you're gonna have what's that funny enough is that would probably still be less calories than whatever the fuck else <laughs> yeah, definitely it would be for sure. When you look at like the the, the ingredient list that ends up being these most unnecessary ingredients in like a brownie is like quinoa quinoa fucking cocoa and then there's like some other nib stuff in there and then they start putting in seeds and then they start putting in nuts and then there's butters and then they start putting in like oh i'll put coconut oil because health and then it's yeah, like 100%. a thousand calories for a square this big of some chocolate peanut butter brownie Gotta oh they those include medium chain butter. triglycerides bro yeah, they, they the include, peanut butter. <laughs> in, in, include in, the peanut butter for the triglycerides because you know you just need that and it would have been cheaper to get the chocolate chip cookies from Coles. It fucking would. Two dollars. <laughs> They're actually them. sick. I was going to say, so and they would right. they taste better. <laughs> fucking, if you're if you're in a growth phase, they're like sixteen hundred calories for the whole six pack. Done. Yeah. And they're yeah. so easy to eat. I love how you know that, that, that off the top of your head. That, oh yeah, and that's that's endorsing an eating disorder, Ben. You can't do that. I am endorsing the shit out of it. <laughs> when but it yeah, comes time I mean, to get, when it comes time to eating six thousand calories, you will figure out ways to do it, and you'll be like Ben, how? And I'll be like, Coles cookies. Told you, you're going to slow down the, the absorption of McDonald's with a cheeseburger. That's how it works. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're adding fat to slow down the meal. Man, just you, 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 un- you un- unwrap, the unwrap your bro. burger and put another burger in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just on top. <laughs> just double it. That's it. That's yeah. how you're slowing down fucking absorption. But what else we got? What other fad diets have we got that we can we can talk about? Well, I mean, anyway, there's, like, so we got. There's a- there's a really good one, oh. carnivore. Like carnivore, me and Dot were talking about because he just finished his microbiology. Uh, sorry, micro, um, uh, biome, but microbiome um, <laughs> course, and that was a great time just listening to expand on that because the amount of fucking morons that dive into this game talking about gut microbiome because they've picked one bacterial micro that they know about. We've got to increase this one. And, and it's then- like someone did a podcast with a very very intelligent person on this subject two weeks ago. Imagine trying to use a different podcast to plug your own podcast. <laughs> what a dick. I did, did do a, yeah. what a real podcast piece of on, shit. Yeah, what a real <laughs> selfish jerk off. I, I, I did, 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 did do the entire podcast on I, the I heard that podcast with, is Miss as good as this one, though. With, with, with a PhD <laughs> researcher. That's the, that's the thing. Is like when, when we're, talking about, we're talking about paleo diet. Um, sorry, the carnivore diet. And how like people get hooked on this. Like, yeah, I cut out. I just eat meats because that's all the body needs. And then you're completely limiting the nutrients and the fibers and the veg that are exposed to the stomach, feeding these different yeah. kinds of microbiome that even I have no idea about, but I know enough to know that you need to diversify nutrient intake to keep a healthy culture. You know what I love, Ben? I love that you said that you didn't know because we don't really know. No so one, I mean, no one like knows. People who, anyone who actually knows about gut health knows how- And I know so enough complex, to know that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the knows best how part. complex yeah. it is. That yeah. this fucking Instagram chicken at bio got gut health specialist is yeah. not a gut health specialist. Yeah, it's kind of like the you. only thing. The only things we really know, like from the from the biome itself, is it needs to be diverse, or a, a better option for your um your biome is to be diverse. So 
different fruits, different vegetables, yes. different meats, different whatever different to keep it as, as healthy as yeah, keep it as healthy as possible. There is a, a link between the gut and the brain. Yes. There is an interaction that goes on that we're not entirely sure about yet, but we can see that certain things influence each other when we do certain things or eat certain things. And that's really about it. <laughs> like short of that, not much else is going in the bio. If someone is just, selling just you it. a gut health protocol that they say they think is going to fucking clean you out, it's got apple cider vinegar, it's got yeah, yeah. all these put other it, random fucking it, things. It's not any, natu- any naturopath, just fuck them off. <laughs> put, it in, put it into perspective. If we look at, say, other sciences, we look at like chemistry, physics, biology. Uh, we look at all those things, mathematics. 2,000 years, at least, bare minimum, that we're having people practice these fields and have developed their methods. When we start to look at things like nutrition, microbiome, and then we start to look at psychology, give or take this century, literally yeah. this century. So then when they start, when we start diving into that even further, and then looking at things like the interactions between the two, like Scaffy was saying, the brain and the gut, even shorter. We still don't even know enough about the brain. We still don't even know enough about the gut and microbiome and all the different cultures and all the different fucking types. Yet there's someone on Instagram with that in their title as a specialist on it because they did a two-day course somewhere. When there's people literally spending entire doctorates and PhDs over 12 to 15 years trying still to not find know. things, it's still not <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's right. taking, it's it taking... actually is the Dunning Kruger effect. It, it yeah. that is one of the biggest examples of it because I feel like that's one of the areas these days that people constantly fucking harp on about is gut health this, gut health that, and they they throw out but, some words like microbiome and they don't yeah. really know what they mean and that's as far as they get. You know what the dumbest part is someone will like they'll just tell a person or a client whatever to diversify their plants and fruit and they'll get it a, a variety of salads and veg which is great advice they'll get like a better passing of their stomach they'll start to digest things better metabolism probably going to feel better they're going to shit a bit better too like they're just going to be less uh less strained going to the bathroom and then they're gonna be like yeah this person's a specialist they know what they're talking about they told me to eat more plants everyone tells wow. you to eat more plants it's the basis yeah. of the food guidelines oh my god it, it, it's scary that you need to reinforce that you need to eat fruits and vegetables. It's Dude, it is really, scary. really Honestly, scary there's a reason even when I'm screening that many new clients, long. man. But when I screen t- that many new clients, it's one of the things that sticks out the most is yeah. how little fruit and veg they <laughs> actually eat. It yeah, is dude, actually one of my, so funny. Man, one of my online, one of my clients that I've had for PT now transitioned to online. I love him and hopefully he doesn't listen to this, but he probably will. He'll know I'm talking about him, but he'll get over it. 60 years old, right? Good shape, pretty strong, like, got hemorrhoids because he didn't have enough diversity in his <laughs> vegetable and fruit intake. And I've been telling him for years to eat it. And this is what will happen if you don't eat it or potentially happen if you don't eat enough fruits and veggies. Gets it. Guess what he messages me. So by the way, I got this. So now I have to eat more fruits and veg. And then a week later, he's like, oh, eating more fruits and veg. I feel really good. It's like, <laughs> fucking really? Man, <laughs> I've been telling you for three you years, say, dude. You could say this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. But until it actually does happen. It happens, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And they're not going to do anything to change it, right? <laughs> oh, it's like, fuck, I, man. That's, that's no different. Like you expand then on, say, like you can move into like challenges. Like someone no. recently, like we were talking about uh, that I know. Now, of, actually, but- this is the big one at the moment is the challenges, the 12-week challenges. The thing is, the thing is, like a, a good challenge has the potential to teach someone some key methods thank, and principles. Thank you. If, I don't mind them. Yeah, I don't mind properly. them if they're done properly and you're actually coaching, not just saying here's yes. a fucking meal plan that's gonna be the same. How thing many have you seen weeks. that actually do that though? That's the thing. That's, that's the, the thing. It's like we're talking, we're talking optimally if you did it properly yeah. and professionally. You should have a good 12-week strategy plan with periodization, learning techniques, enhancing and scaffolding off those skills, which is a very basic teaching method. Take the, the, the knowledge you taught them the week prior, enhance that to the week coming, and then build off that each week. So they walk away from the 12 weeks and go, I could either stay with this person for new goals, or I know enough to go do something a bit better. Exactly but right. you know, very, the very it's likely- almost, one, It's almost like a course. The challenge is a course. Like you are learning yeah. like on the, on the job for yeah. 12 weeks, how to eat, how to train, all it of it. It should be. I like think what we should do is actually the- outline why they work for some people or why they think they work. So basically what happens is they'll put a bunch of people through this random 12 weeks, right? They'll, they'll have a bunch of sample meal plans that may have a couple, let's just say it's for 1,500, 1,200 calories, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, basically all they're doing is they're a generic meal plan that they're putting someone in a massive calorie deficit and then they're getting them to train at, I don't know, F45 or body fit three or four times a week, absolutely smashing them. So basically their expenditure is really high the intake of calories is extremely low. So there's no choice for them to lose weight. But I guess what happens at the end of every single 12 weeks, there has no pre-existing nutritional education. They don't know how to track macros. They don't know anything about calories. All they know is what was on this meal plan. 
And eventually they stop doing, they stop going F45. So they stop following the meal plan. They also stop doing the output and they put all the weight back on. Mm-hmm. And it's just a vicious and cycle yeah. again yeah. and again yeah. and again that people do. Oh, another yeah. 12 weeks, another 12 weeks. Yeah, another yeah, exactly. two or three, two totally or three this different. year. See, that was, the, that, was the, that was the intervention I had. Um, one of the control groups I've got going at the moment at FitStop is that they're, it's not that they're, like they're, their program is actually pretty good. I'll give it to them. Their, their program um, is actually pretty decent in terms of having different calorie options in terms of like, um, are you trying to perform and improve like strength and get stronger and like grow muscle? Are you trying to lose weight? Yada, yada. So they have options to, without giving specific meal plans, options for foods to eat. Here's how I would go about it if I was in a deficit trying to lose weight, whatever. Um, and the program is actually pretty decent. There's days of conditioning. There's days of actual increasing progressive overload as much as you can in a group setting. So it's not bad. It's actually a pretty good setup for a group context. But where I got involved was one of the things I always see is that everyone only looks at the challenge from challenge to challenge basis and nothing more. There's no periodization purpose or they structure. Just it's just 12 weeks is yeah, over. That's 12 it. 12 weeks, six weeks. I'll do another one after that. That'll be six weeks. And they burnt the fuck that. out by that point. They yeah, are they've done three or four, out. probably got halfway through it, stopped because it didn't do what they thought it was going to do because no one's preempted them on what's supposed to happen. And then they just bail on it. What I was doing was encouraging them to set goals through the challenge, but looking at it as periodization. So look, if you're going to do four challenges a year, let's set a premise and a purpose to them so that as you get on in the years, like as the year goes by and you're still doing like, say you're still doing fit stop or whatever in two to three years time, you can look back and go, look, when I first started, Ben come and spoke to me and said, this is what your goal should, like, this is how to set a more periodized goal of your training. The first three challenges might be you trying to build mass. So you're going to look at learning about how to lift properly um, because some of them are pretty decent. Like Josh, uh, one of the guys I do podcasts with sometimes and, and work with a fit stop. He's uh, ASCA level two, I think. So he's actually like pretty decent. So you get some decent movement patterns. Okay, learn that. Learn progressive overload. Learn how to eat. Now, two to three of those challenges, you might spend in a surplus. So then come the fourth challenge is your strip back period. And you go ham on that strip back period. And you've essentially just periodized your year for training purpose and food purposes. And it's sort of done subconsciously because you're just doing challenges like that. You're doing it, what everyone else is doing, but it's more specific to you. So the challenge itself can be good if you just stop looking at it as like a, well, here's a six week block. Here's another six week block. I didn't do anything in between. The weight came back on. Now we've got to do another six week block. Like yeah. it, it's, you're just running on a fucking treadmill, getting nothing from it. Yeah. I mean, it, it'd be easy to counteract a lot of the, the challenge issues by simply Um, putting in some sort of education. So it's kind of like, you know, you want to do this 12 week challenge. You have to come to this nutrition seminar that only runs for an hour and a half. And we're going to teach you all about macros and, you know, potentially how to track. You do that in the first week. And at the end of the fourth week or something, it's like, okay, let's touch up on your nutritional practices. Let's see where you're at, how you've been going. What have we been doing? Do it again. And then just keep continually educating. And then, you know, you can throw in training education or whatever it is that you want in there. And it's just kind of like, you can only do the challenge or be part of that 12 week challenge if you attend this like seminar and that way you can, you know, troubleshoot any problems that people have. And it's like, well, I might not want to track. Cool. Here's other ways to yeah. you know, mon- monitor. Education is the only way to break the mold. This exactly. Mold that we're going to give you skills. Yeah. Way. It's like, we're going to give you skills that go past the 12 week challenge. So it's like, you can do the 12 week challenge and use it to test these educational tools we're giving you. Yeah. You're practicing like live practice. Yep. And then after that, Hey, you want to do another challenge? Go nuts. You don't want to do another challenge. At least now you've got the tools to carry yourself through. And the thing too that I hate is the language and association we have around that a challenge means weight loss and that's it. Like yeah. they're only ever promoted like, well, I want to get my health back and you know, you weigh 50 kilos, you're going to go do a challenge. You're going to so lose cool. what, five let's kilos put, of that? Let's, put, what the let's fuck? put 20 kilos on you and get yeah, healthy. <laughs> let's actually get eating some fucking food and lifting some yeah. weights and what you put on 20 kilos just because you're not used to eating. If you just simply yeah. get into a routine of consuming food three to five times a day, regardless of what it is, chances are you're probably going to put some weight on because to be, you know, let's say you're a 25 year old male who's six foot and you're 50, 60 kilos. I dare say if you just simply eat spaced out food and train with a progressive overload, you're probably going to start to gain some weight. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I mean, we've been going for a bit on this. I didn't think we wouldn't even touch the training pads. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Is that is shake that weight? Shake is weight. That, is that or is that is that next week's episode? I guess that's next week's episode. What have we got next? What's on the agenda? Well, usually we would lead into questions and then always as uh, the last previous or previous episodes, shame of life, but. I guess, is there any other fad at night we have to touch on before we end this oh. segment? I feel like we've gone for a long time on these. So. The, what's, all, what's all the, what's all the, um, oh, fucking mum got made to do one. Um, the, 
Uh, no, no, no. Jake, the like Tony Ferguson? Yeah, Tony Ferguson. Yeah, Tony Ferguson. That. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. She had some medical conditions and had to have some procedures. So, like, fair enough. Did need to lose some rapid weight in a quick six, six, uh, six session. Well, fair enough. But the thing that gets me, it's usually paired with something like Duramine from a GP. And it's like, cool, here, take this and take this. What did you learn in that time? Again, we come back to the education premise because all you're doing then is letting someone re-enter the vicious cycle of, well, I lost 20 kilos. Um, my hunger was completely dropped off and I filled it like what I did need to eat with like three quick shakes, learned nothing about yeah. food. Um, now I'm back to square one because Duramine's wore off. The doctor won't replenish it because it's speed. And I've just had milkshakes for three days, three times a day for the last 12 weeks. All this weight's come off. Now I'm off on my own and I'm eating again and I'm going back to the only habits that I know, which was shitty food and like highly palatable food. Now I'm putting weight back on and you just get stuck in a loop of cycles just because no education. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I was going to say the other one that um, totally forgot about was the blood type diet. Like, oh, fuck. If you can say that aloud with a straight face and think that you, could, you should do that, go do it. Just go well, do it. The, fu- the, the funniest thing was there was a study done um, I want to say it was 2013. Don't quote me on that. Um, they basically gave, you know, these different groups, uh, certain diets. And it's like this type A uh, diet was given to this particular group. Actually, sorry, to all the groups. I'll take that back. They gave the same diet to all the groups and monitored these blood types and seeing how they responded. They all responded the same and all their heart health markers improved. And it's kind of like, it was irrelevant of your blood type. <laughs> so it was shocking. like- Shocking stuff. Right? It was kind of like- Eh, maybe the blood type doesn't make a difference. So um, it's like actually dependent on to- if you're born under a full moon and you uh, had the hair of a, wo- a werewolf and you had a, a rabbit's foot in your left cheek. And that's and it was, the decision. It was only if Saturn was in retrograde. Otherwise, it didn't count. <laughs> yeah. <Not> Mercury <laughs> has to be Saturn. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Fuck, fuck Mercury. Yeah, Mercury um, shit. That's what I think. <laughs> it's all about the rings. Now, um, you know, so it's like, and then they, I think there was a whole stack of like meta analysis and meta reviews that they did where they basically said there is no actual evidence that a blood type diet does anything for you like at all. And it's all literally fall- it's the, Sorry, the literal food um, nutrition version of the um, uh, Myers Briggs personality trait uh, assessment. It's literally the same thing. Not yeah. an ounce of like scrutinized evidence supported in this at all, but we're all going to preach this as if it's science or it's backed by something. It's not. Yeah, well, when it sounds fancy, people want to jump on it. I'm an INFJ. Cool. And the biggest thing is just like whatever diet it is, it's not the actual diet itself. It's just the reduction in body weight usually fixes biomarkers. So, you know, yeah. lipid profile, how many people's cholesterol go down when they lose five five kilos, you know? Yeah, it's like it's who, would have thought, drop, who would have thought dropping visceral fat was healthy? <laughs> who'd have thought, who'd have thought swapping out and- high palatable <laughs> foods for large amounts of veg, salad, and fucking fruits was a good yeah. thing i don't yeah. want to do that eating vegetables is shit yeah eating it regularly with i'll do a greens powder stuff. though it, it, it's, it's like when you watch a tv ad and it's got like you know the um shakes or it's got like a supplement or it's got you know a training um machine that they want to endorse you know those cheesy uh tv ads oh, like app circle like, pro yeah but then Remember always in the things? always 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 at the bottom it says in conjunction junction with yeah, diet <laughs> or, yeah. or in or in junction with training if you're doing yeah. the diet one that's kind of like yeah no shit <laughs> like yeah, it must yeah. also be in a calorie deficit to be effective oh fuck yeah yeah it's like the man shake that everyone's oh, talking about yeah. <laughs> everyone's going nuts about it it's kind of like fucking it's just it, it's a meal replacement shake it, it's nothing special like, like been i said before for anything that has a name is likely <laughs> fucking bullshit. Blood type diet, man shake diet, Tony Ferguson diet, paleo diet, fucking keto diet. It's all bullshit. So <clears throat> they all they all follow the same. They all work for the same reason, right? Yeah, exactly right. Insulin right. model. <laughs> I feel like that that touched a, a nerve with Chris, which was exciting. I'm kind of oh, just because I, so. I hear them so often. So, <laughs> because I still do coach some gen, gen pops as well, so I, I hear it quite a lot. And then also too, because Andy does a lot of calls with a lot of gen pop clients. Yeah, and they're just going about <laughs> things so wrong, and it's just I just get so overhearing it because it's just like, how fucking stupid can you still be? Like, <laughs> right, but even 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 still, like I guess I guess on the internet you can find anything, but. You have more technology and information in the palm of your hand now than ever existence in the human of in the existence of humans ever exists yeah. in the palm of your hand. I suppose that's also the problem as well. That's exactly yeah. right. That, yeah, that it is. is. It's a it's a twenty catch twenty two. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. We won't get into that because we'll be here for another three hours. But 
let's move along and cheer Chris up because right. he's very, very, very rowdy right now. And I like it, but you know, we've got to make the big boy happy. So let's move into a fuck Mary Kill because apparently that's what we do these days. And this will be a fun one. Trust, trust, trend, test, or master on. <laughs> ah, see, you already cheered up. Look at him. It goes, guys, watch YouTube just for this segment because he just smiled. It's the first time you're gonna have, first and last time you see Chris smile. I'm killing trend for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing it for sure. I'm going yeah, to look. marry Mast? test. No test. Yeah, no. okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, you kind of need test, so I'm gonna marry yeah. test and then I'm gonna fuck master. Fuck master. I think we're all doing that, right? Yeah, no, nah, I'm actually going to marry Master because it's my yeah. favorite drug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fuck the shit out of Trent. I'm going to fuck. No, I'm going to fuck the shit out of Test and yeah, kill Trent. So, <laughs> um, would you rather be hot forever with no fan or aircon, or be cold forever without a blanket? Just a just a little cultural fact, guys. This is why the uh, population of India invented curries. So, <laughs> I'll be hot forever and just eat a lot of spicy food. Sweat creates a natural flat, a, nat- a natural flow of air. I'm going to be cold, actually. I don't like the heat, bro. I'm not a fan. I'm trying to think, would I rather be hot and then or would I rather be cold? I think I'd, I'd rather be hot. Well, then I got an excuse for my small dick, so I'll be cold. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I prefer the heat over, over the cold. So. I hate feeling I hate feeling hot. It's just... Well, like, is water, very, is water very nearby? Is water an option? Like, can I dive in a pool? Is that a thing? I mean, it doesn't... Like I said, these aren't that specific, bro. <laughs> Like, Cause it's fucking hard to warm up when you're cold, but you got no blankets or anything. Like, but like you can offset cold by water. Yeah, like, I suppose it really depends how with... cold it is. Right? It, it'd, you'd be it'd be easier to be cold and heat up than it probably would be to be hot and cool down, right? It's true. Yeah, maybe. Unless you're walking around naked all day everywhere, which I mean, I'm not. Mad. Well, again, they didn't specify, right? Exactly. So that's why that's yeah. We've got to try and take it as that's it open is. to interpretation. Be more specific, guys. Exactly. I keep telling you. Well, it's hard because I can only put so many words in one of these question boxes as well. So it's like just one question ends up being like four like, like, questions. Yeah, like, well, please well, that's, that's continue. All, continue. Yeah, it's like part one, part two, part three, <laughs> part four. Would you rather a full year of training to a playlist of Christmas carols or nursery rhymes? Christmas, Christmas carols. I'm a I'm a fiend for some boobs. I'm just gonna put Mar- Mariah Carey on replay. Yeah, pro- provided it's the boob. Sure, not Mariah oh, Carey. Hundred like, percent Mariah Carey. Yeah, I can't he's, he's my first Noel. <laughs> all right here we go we'll do a little bit more of a serious one the three body type myth endomorph mesomorph and ectomorph i mean there's no direct question but there's all three of us here, is, right? is the three body type of myth there you go that is the question there was just Scaff no is clearly an ecto so that's um it, it's true it's all based on science 100 <laughs> percent. Um, i am the <laughs> definition of ectomorph no so like i guess looking at it they would use to generalize groups of people i think from memory like it was just like mm. we can basically look at a, a three like three types of people and be like okay we have you know the short stubby the tall lanky and those that are in the middle <laughs> it wasn't anything that's based on the three body types whether it be like a, a body type diet body type training they're not really um because you can have backed. someone that looks like an endomorph but they're actually just eating a lot of food at that point in time so i originally heard Alberto Nunes talked about this years ago and yeah. he basically, people would look at him because he put on a lot of weight in off season and he got like quite chunky, but he was yeah. calories were fucking so high in, in order to do that. But you'd look at him and think, oh, he must be an endomorph. But reality is actually an ectomorph yeah, by right. that kind so, of classification because of how that, fast his metabolic rate. That's is. the other thing is like this, uh, this idea of ectomorphs, but really it's just how, how, how little has this person been eating or training? Have they actually been exposed to progressive overload with a, a calorie surplus? Or they just woke up and went, well, I'm born with shitty genetics and I'm naturally lean. Well, no, you just don't eat anything. You smoke weed 40 times a day and have one meal that's made up of like noodles. Well, There's so yeah, much right. of a lifestyle fact that kind of comes into that as well. Like you said, it's that's the biggest thing is it's like, you don't know what their lifestyle actually looks like. You know Exactly. So, like I said, they're punching a fucking, punching weed every day. They're fucking eating this, eating that, not eating this. Yeah, I guess- Probably should have started with a breakdown of which ones we tried. But anyway, I'm <laughs> just thinking like, we know Scaffy, what they Scaffy's are. Scaffy's an ecto. I'm clearly the meso. <laughs> <laughs> so basically mesomorph being strong and athletic. And then we have what? Uh, endo being stubby, short and stubby. Yeah. The way that I've heard it like before is it's like, you've got like the crossfitter fat. who's the ecto. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> I've seen this classification somewhere. The crossfitter is the ecto. The bodybuilder is the meso, and then yeah. the strong man is the endo. Is the endo, yeah, and the endo being tall and lean and tall and shit. yeah, tall which is really weird. You wouldn't you wouldn't think strong men are tall and lean. 
Oh, it's just because they're more, I suppose, thick set. Like they have thicker joints, whereas like a, a bodybuilder has, you know, I suppose, smaller joints and then obviously ecto even smaller again. So that's the classification yeah. that I kind of heard there. But it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're the three it's types. A lot of shit. And again, that's what I mean. That's how shit it is. You can't, yeah. you, you yeah. can have and, an and so many socio cultural genetic bio factors that come into play as to how someone looks and why they look that way. It, like, again, it's just another title that needs to get thrown out. Yeah, that's fair. So basically, is it a myth? I mean, it's it's not whether the the three body types are a myth. They're, it just they're doesn't matter as well. Yeah, they're a classification, and that's about it. Um, if you could choose any person to transform, who would it be? So, I think the examples that they've listed here are like Thor, <laughs> meaning Chris Hemsworth, I imagine, um, like Dr. Dre. <laughs> so any <laughs> any celebrity, I guess, that you could work with. Who would you want to work with? Oh, well, I don't want to say someone that's already got a good rig, like Thor. Yeah. Oh, Adam I Sandler. I think that, that was the... <laughs> Adam Sandler. Yeah. Just get Juicy Jack for all Grown Ups 3. <laughs> you just can't what happened between Grown Ups 2 and 3? And Adam Sandler hit the trend. <laughs> I'll tell you, that J- what's, the, what's the other guy that's always in his movies? James... Is it James? James Spader? No, is James Spader? No, the, the fat guy. He does... Um, oh, yeah. I know the one you're talking about. I don't know his name. Yeah, the King of oh. Queens. Yeah, that guy. Whatever yeah. his name is. I want him. <laughs> it's a fucking funny dude, though. He's good. <laughs> yeah, he is funny, but I'll get him fucking lean and shrewd. Well, actually, I, you know who I love? Vince Vaughn. Vince I don't know Vaughn's why. Yeah, I just think Vince Vaughn would be Vince bad. Vaughan? A Jack Vince Vaughn would be sick. Ja- Jack to Owen Wilson and just do a wedding crashes too. Yeah. Well, I just, <laughs> yeah. I, just figured, I just figured that it'd be like... It's kind of like a package deal with us. Yeah, it's part and parcel, right? Yeah, yeah. You get Vince Vaughn, you get Owen Wilson, so... Yeah, right. I'll take Luke then. I like Luke. He's funny. I'll go, I'll go Seth, uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah, oh, yeah, fair. But like, like Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill. Get, him on, get, him, get, get him to keep smoking. Yeah, Jonah Hill's already done eat. it. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be a yeah. I mean, that could that could work. But I guess is there any real like top celebrities though that you'd want to work with? Like you know, a listers, cream of the crop. Um, um any, any of any of those guys that are like making drastic transformations have great work ethics anyway. So yeah. I hate these fucking celebrity trainer cl- like claims of like uh, this coach transferring these people. You just got people that are getting literally paid that their life. That was that was, is, that was the next question. <laughs> oh fuck me! They get literally paid to do nothing but for three months before their contract yeah. starts, or like for three or six months before the movie starts. Eat, sleep, train, get a professional trainer, take drugs, get supplements, get fed, and just be at this place at a certain time and train the house down. That's all you have to do. That's yeah, in your contract. So if you do that- The next question was, what's the difference between a celebrity transformation and a gen pop? They literally like paid to do it. I yeah. promise you, the external <laughs> motivation you get if you were paid to do this as a job before you had to film, I promise you, you're going to get results. Because you're stepping go, on a bodybuilding stage. You have this thing hanging over your head that you have to do it for. Yeah. There's a big difference between have and want. Yeah. So like a lot of these gen pop guys, they want to do something, whereas they have to get in shape for this movie role. Like it's not a, you know, actually who has a, who does, yeah, actually I, I've changed my mind who I want to do for the celebrity. <laughs> Go who, who has a killer work ethic and I've seen him do some fucking crazy body transformations is Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. I knew yeah, you were yeah, going to say that. I knew you were going to yeah. say that. As yeah. soon as I heard, as soon as you said like several transformations, every like from the mechanic Man, to he's done it all. Batman to- The one where he's like real, like real skinny and like real- fighter. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, it's good. He's so yeah. good, man. Yeah, he is good. Yeah, I, think for, I think for me, like if I was to pick a celebrity just, just to work with, it'd just be like Johnny Depp. Just he's like a cool dude, funny. Yeah. Plus, I would just love to be a reason why he gets somewhat of his um his uh what's the name uh fucking what not rapport what's the word uh reputation back like yeah put him in a position in a movie to get his reputation back because just imagine like, just imagine getting him like absolutely yoked. Imagine he's just like this you know, two hundred pounds like two hundred ten pounds of just fucking muscle. <laughs> he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> this is ready to step Jack on stage. Swole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. He just like stands next to Sean Clarita and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the next, the next, uh, the next fucking parts of the Caribbean is just him just like fucking invisible lats. Yeah, Captain Jack down, Swole. Walk, walk, yeah, walk Captain Jack Swole. Yeah, it's, it's Captain Jack Sparrow's brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got? That was, so that was going to answer that one. That makes life easier. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Was the other one was the whole I'm embarrassed mind to muscle didn't click until I was told something because it's a two-part question until I was told visualization so then 
can we make an encyclopedia of muscle visualizations? <laughs> Maybe they're asking, I don't know, there was also to touch on the mind muscle connection. I'm not sure. Uh, so there is, I think it was more so the visualization thing than anything. So visualization actually has some, some evidence, especially in like psychological research that it can enhance mastery of skills through visualization. So things like um, one of the skills they practice for downhill looving, lo downhill looving, they actually yeah. physically due to health and safety risks, don't do a lot of downhill like tobogganing and stuff to get used to it. They work in like G-force environments and they work in like things that replicate the action, but don't directly do it all the time. So one of the things that they do a lot of is visualization of the slopes, the speeds, the way they should turn, the way the body should move, um, interacting with their head about how something's supposed to look. And it actually shows a benefit in improved performance. There was a golf, there was a golfer who got locked up in prison, and literally all he did was um, to keep to keep sane was focus on visualization of his swing. Now he didn't swing for like six or twelve months of his incarceration. Came out with a better subpar than he went in with, having not yeah. touched a, touched a club for like twelve months. So if that's what they're referring to, visualization of what is supposed to be happening does help. To be fair, I do I do use that quite a bit. So like often prior to a session, the night before or even the morning of, I will sit there and visualize and go through exactly how I want the movement to feel, exactly what I'm looking to, like how I want the muscle to contract when I am under that load or how I want it to kind of look if it was like I was looking at it from different environment or a different angle. So I definitely do use visualization to a degree, but not like, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's like the be all and end all. No, so like, because often you can go in that you can visualize how you want something to feel. And then, you know, let's just say you're, you're feeling a little bit off that day and you go in and you just, the load feels super heavy and it doesn't feel the way you want it to feel. And you just feel like shit. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I guess that also leads into um, a bit of like inspiration, motivation stuff that you could, you know, jump into. But I know we'd be here for another five hours with Ben just running on a tangent. So Let's not do that. <laughs> may, 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 maybe next week's uh, chat you know, tied into uh, training fads. So for anyone listening, please remind us that, you know, when I put up the question box that we're talking about training fads next week, because we're going <laughs> to gar gar guarantee, like, I'll, you know what, Ben, go write it on your whiteboard. So we remember. <laughs> just writing this Under the dick, dick and balls or <laughs> another dick. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a specialty dick and ball so that we know that that's what we're doing. And for those listening, Ben is literally writing it down on his whiteboard as we speak. So jump on the YouTube to see your short shorts and, you know, his glutes poking out of those gray shorts because that's what he likes. <laughs> that, and he's also left-handed. I, I just forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> he's left-handed, so he's the devil's. <laughs> isn't he's it? The devil's, the devil's born. He's yeah. the devil's born. <laughs> ben, I'd, I'd like you to start writing with your right hand. What's even more funny is the first question that I just looked at for Shame of Life and <sighs> talking about devil spawn. God damn it, your kid's possessed and there is no cure. <laughs> So if possessed, okay. Okay. It. describe describe your new day-to-day -day life. It's free and clear because I drowned it. I mean, I mean, I feel like you're gonna have to like lock the room every time you go to sleep at night, or it's gonna be doing some like weird conjuring shit walking through. Well, I guess it depends house. on what sort of possession it is. Like, is it possessed? I just assume if it's Satan, <laughs> yeah. it's demonic possession. Right? Yeah. Like <laughs> if it's my son, and it would be possessed by greatness, so that's fine. <laughs> It's like possessed by like a gay angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, dad. <laughs> hey. I mean, it could be interesting. Like day-to-day -day life, if your son was possessed. or you, I just assumed he's trying to kill you because he's, he's satanic. I don't know. He's trying to kill you for whatever reason. Do you know what we're just no, don't, I don't get in those movies. Just punt the fucking thing. Just it's just like, just, no, it's like, what's that like main joke? You? I'm into that shit. <laughs> well, now I can't hide my erection. <laughs> here we go the first movie that gave you those strange feelings bro no oh, here we go ben's got a story <laughs> i think i covered I was, already, I, was, I was i was i would have been nine ten I it was say, harry potter for me yeah you know yours was harry potter I, we've already movie, even though potter. even though i'm still worried that you think now that's still oh thing. wait are we it's talking about story. like like it just oh. says strange feelings it's open to interpretation oh fuck okay all right you had a story. Go. No, you had it. Go for it. Keep going. Okay. You're so in, mine, in mine, was, mine wasn't the same feeling that Chris is talking about because he's clearly talking about Hermione. That's yes. clearly where we're going with that. Mine was Gosh. about the, the first time. I think I was like, I must have been sub 12 because I was in primary school. I think I was like closer to 10 or 11. And I was, was starting out watching the footy with my old man. And 
typical like well, dad. this is getting weird <laughs> <laughs> I'm going deep. falls asleep falls asleep with the remote and won't let me change the channel because that's what just dads do yeah, and so. he decided as the footy finished to put on the movie channel so i'm like cool we're just watching a movie um and then I thought he was still awake and it was like, he didn't tell me to go to bed or anything because it started getting later and we was watching the movie. Next thing, Children of the Corn came on and I was like fucking trash from that for like three straight days. There was one part of the movie where it was like, this, these kids have a voodoo. Like it just gave me my fear of kids, to be honest. The, these kids say, what had- feelings did this, this movie give you? Yeah, this is, this <laughs> Fucked is- up once. Oh, I- Fucked up once. Okay. I was, Cause I, it, it, there was a group of kids with a voodoo doll and the next thing they started stabbing it and there's a woman inside a church she starts pissing out blood and I'm just like from her face and I was like bro should I be watching this or like what's going on here and then I just looked over and dad's asleep I'm like well he's not put me to bed and I just decided to stay and watch it and I didn't sleep for like three days yeah see I can't think of a movie that gave me any like I mean in terms of strange feelings I mean if we're talking about you know sexual strange feelings I can't think of a movie but you know when you used to watch watch footy and then just got a weird erection you didn't know what to do about it well that too but you know when you watch um like uh rage like music oh, rage. Rage <laughs> yeah yeah that, that, that's what it, that's what it was Push right? that's me, what I, I think and then just that, touch that, me even before then but i think mean, that's what i started <laughs> <with. Aerobics laughs> on style at 6 <laughs> yeah. yeah when i was sort of like oh okay but then like if you want to talk about like i guess strange feelings like scared man honestly i would have been like eight or nine and it was um nightmare on elm street I yeah mine was not on elm street it was on like yeah. Lost star one night and i didn't know yeah. what it was and i was like oh I'll watch this this looks pretty cool and yeah, before I know, no. it's like Freddy Krueger's like in people's dreams and yeah. shit. And I'm like, yeah, couldn't sleep for <laughs> like days. The, the, the <laughs> tune to it, like one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Uh-huh. Forget it. I'm done. <laughs> like that's the only movie that's ever scared me. I don't get scared of like scary movies at all. Don't, don't go. Yeah. That, that, that is the time when scary? you feel so vulnerable is when you're asleep. You feel so vulnerable. So yeah, like, yeah, you, you have no control. Like, if Freddy's getting you, you have no control. Like you, you can't even run. He, he's, yeah. he controls the dream. So yeah. Anyway, that's interesting. <laughs> just so, take some mushrooms, so he has to go for a trip as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're in my world now. <laughs> yeah, you're in my world. <laughs> All right, become sexually attracted to office supplies or marry a horse. Marry a horse. I mean, I do like me some good sticky Actually, notes. I was going to say, I'm already sexually attracted to, to office wear, office wear, office wear. Office fucking. What I do with this office wear? Is I'm, I, oh. This is office supplies, bro. Yeah, office, office supplies. Wear. I'm losing my mind. I need. I need. To <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with office supplies. Not marry a horse. Just say, uh, yeah. I, I also don't mind marrying a horse because I do enjoy horses. So. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> that could have no been one, worded way No one said it needed to be weird. No one, like, no one said you need any sexual relations with this horse. It's just. It's like just a horse. And what a horse. <laughs> Tell me when to stop. Uh, Tell me when to stop. Yeah. Now. <laughs> like, why, st- why aren't you still going? <laughs> the length of the whiteboards? Jesus, fuck. <laughs> the least sexy food to use during foreplay. Mm. Pineapple unpeeled. Nah. Yeah, Pineapple's still nah. sexy, regardless. Whichever way you I feel like there's, I feel like there's worse. I feel like it'd be like broccoli. <laughs> yeah, I just I just picture it as like I just picture it like on uh, little Nicky when when Hitler is oh, in hell yeah, yeah, and he's like he's like he's Stalin's like uh, sorry fucking Stalin Satan's like uh, go grab the pineapple he's like oh this one and he's like bigger he's like this one <laughs> he's like bend over <laughs> there's just there's I'm gonna yeah, go I'm with gonna... green beans green beans green beans that's fair yeah I'm going I think I'm going with broccoli on mine actually mushrooms would be pretty weird as well to be fair. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm not talking it. magic mushrooms. I'm talking like just mushroom yeah. mushrooms. Chilies? Mushrooms. Like imagine that. Imagine oh, that actually, snaps, yeah. I imagine that snapping open stuff. on your sphincter. Oh. Well, maybe people think that's kind of sexy though. Oh, that's I mean, cool. That's fucked. I'm, I'm too scared to Google that. So I'm not going to try yeah. it. Don't Google that. Waffles? No. <laughs> the blue kind? <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Someone had to go there. <laughs> you do not sick. for the life of you search that. <laughs> I'll do it. Welcome to the ninety, the late nineties and two thousands. I think every every dude had that on their phone at some point, just to show their mates. It's like, how fucked is this, bro? The the internet was an interesting place in a first uh, in its first conception. Oh, it was man, fucked it was up, fucked. <laughs> a figurine that will never take toy stores by storm. Um, 
bodybuilding figurine. <laughs> That's pretty much every action hero figurine, though. So that, yeah, that is every action hero. I'm going to say something like Sean Ray. That's annoys. It annoys me when we talk about when we talk about um, when we talk about body image issues and how women like uh, girls get subjected to like these unrealistic standards. I had a fucking action man figurine at like seven years old, He-Man figurine, and then there was like an Arnie playing Conan the Barbarian. Literally, Bro, He-Man just- is fucking yolt. <laughs> yeah. Hulk Dolph for Lundgren, fuck's sake, Hulk and Goku. Yeah, bad. Yeah, my mine began with with Dragon Ball Z for sure. So Goku, Vegeta. Oh yeah. You, like bro, like how fuck? Look at Broly. Broly. Yeah. Is yeah. Like my, get my, my man, you guys are so young. My first action figure was like was Power in black Rangers. and white. Yeah, it was, black, it was black, it had a black and a red Power Ranger. So even yeah. Power Rangers were like a little bit yolked in some of the some of the episodes. And oh, when that pink Ranger took off a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they were Ben's, definitely Ben's first they were definitely memory of a strange feeling. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to strange feelings now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going with a Sean Ray figurine for you guys. So <laughs> that's yeah. not taken off anytime soon. What do you got? Um, oh, what's her name? Um, Clementine Ford figurine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got for us, Chris? Uh, I'm gonna go with something like, mm. I, I, don't, I don't know, I, I really can't think. My brain is just fucking just not working today. Oh, I've been in prep for two weeks. Fucking brain fog. He's on a keto diet. <laughs> I, I, I'm on a keto diet. I just train legs. So it's, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with something like Marge Simpson or something. I just feel like that wouldn't sell. I mean, probably. <laughs> the Simpsons least, like least notable, sell. Least notable of the characters, I feel. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Like, maybe. She's not up there. I, oh, see, I would still buy a Sean Ray figurine because he was still had a sick physique. Regardless of oh, him yeah. being a dick, it has no nothing. It doesn't take away from his seat. So I would still buy yeah. that. So I, I still I just feel like I just feel like the the actual um, knowledge of Sean Ray would just be like, nah, no one knows who he is. Like no one knows. Whoever's who anybody buying these is. action figures doesn't have knowledge of Sean Ray. If that's what I'm saying. saying that, 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 that's why I like, picked Sean Ray. Oh, like, you could pick man, anybody. I'll buy that. You could, you, you could pick any bodybuilder, but you've probably if you saw like a Ronnie or an Arnie, you'd be like, I know that person. I've seen them somewhere. Like no one has seen Sean Ray anywhere. So it's kind of like Sean Ray. And it's Sean Ray. No one likes Sean Ray, so it makes sense. I feel like Scaff has got an online issue with Sean Ray. Who doesn't? Got something against Sean Ray. Hey, dude, dude, dude's a dick. Dude's a dick. He's a fucking moron. Which movie would you use to describe your adolescence? Oh. Flashdance. <laughs> 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 uh, and I pulled, I pulled down those I pulled those sparks too Armageddon <laughs> uh, uh, American Pie oh, Very good, very good well yeah, Very good I'll I was going to say you can go I was literally thinking Euro Troop <laughs> I've never been to Europe yet so Dan Wilder <laughs> oh, I wish I wish Oh, I mean that's that's not really adolescence either, then, right? Yeah, that's going into college years. I mean, he was there for like seven of them, right? <laughs> He's still there. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is sick, boy. <laughs> Fuck. Which, which American Pie to be specific? Has to be the first one. Oh, first one, first one. Your OG, yeah, yeah. It can't no, be it yeah. stops. One and two are really good. Three yeah. gets weirdly emotional. Uh, three is the wedding. Three is weirdly yeah. emotional with Stifler. Weirdly yeah. emotional. Yeah. And then like. Because it, it follows that normal trend of like the guy who thinks he's a badass in high school turns out to just be an absolute yeah. goober like out afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get to the uh, high school reunion one, the, the yeah. no, there's like number four of the original cast. Yeah. That one's like structured some like some heartstrings where you're just like, fuck these guys. Like, yeah, did I don't mind. I actually, I, yeah, I don't mind them. And then they got up, then they started doing like all the stiffler spin offs and all the different stuff. Oh, yeah, and it's just fucking like, band like, camp, like, band camp, and, 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 all and yeah, the book, the book of Tantra or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, actually, out of all of those, you know, there's a female, you know, there's a female one out of them. Nah, like, nah, the, yeah. the latest, I didn't know the, that, the, but I haven't seen it. There's not, I've seen it's it, not because it doesn't it. count. No, no, I'm saying yeah. there is, but there's not, it's just not, yeah, well, the like the the chick is a stiffler, like. <laughs> oh. it's fucking, out of all the spin offs, I think Beta House is the best one. Beta House, that's beta what house I was thinking good, of. Yeah. I fucking love Beta House. Yeah, that was funny. Beta House was good. All right. The last movie you would want to be trapped inside? Well, Freddy, Freddy Krueger, right? Mother <laughs> on Elm Street, we just to establish that. Yeah, that's for me, anyway. I'm, I'm with you on that one, I think. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting left in a cornfield with children in the corn. Just not happening. Fuck that. 
There's Got literally a scene. Or, chi- where, or, child, no, chi- or child's play. There's Chucky. a scene where <laughs> you just punt that thing. You just fucking kick it. And children yeah, of the corn, okay. they're magic. I don't know how, it? but they're magical. What about it? Yeah, uh, well, unless you're going near the drain, he's not really going to bother you much, right? Well, I don't know. I'm just throwing. Whereas Freddy, I mean, every you. time you go to sleep, he's fucking there. So uh, it's got to be Nightmare on Elm Street. It's just a person. Freddy's like an entity. Yeah, no, nah, look, that's fair enough. Um, what would you not want to find in your lunchbox on your first day of school? Use Connor. <laughs> I was going to say your mum's <laughs> underwear. I was going to say a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> We all have issues. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they're all valid answers too. <laughs> you wouldn't want to. I mean, yeah, right. That's the last thing you'd want to find. Like, what's this? <laughs> old mate on old mate on um on uh, road trip, and he's like, "Yo, look at I got." I'm like, "What is that? A sheet? No, it's her underwear." <laughs> Did he skin a sheet up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> to finish this off and it's probably the funniest follow-up question to what we just said what would aliens think is the weirdest thing about humans oh. actually i've given this some thought and the fact that <laughs> we on. literally are very selective with like the pets that we have for whatever reason dog is a pet but goat no good yeah. goat goes <laughs> <a pet. laughs> well hey, i mean that's, that's, that's culturally it's a country yeah, so it depends what country you're in, because I know some some cultures consider other animals pets. Well, we like walk pets. around with this little dog, and it just follows us around, kind of thing. I don't know. I just always yeah, found they that concept weird. Like evolutionarily, they served a purpose. There's a, there's an innate reason for that. Mm, I still find it, it weird. We made teamwork. Dog and cat, good. Every other animal, no. I you have birds, it, and you can have fish. You can have yeah. Well, I think the birds. food. I think I think where we draw the line on what's edible is the weird part. Yeah. Okay. Like go on. You, you like well, like we, we look at like hey, we, we don't at, like, where we the, the line of <laughs> well, it depends where, where you are. Yeah, so well, I mean, yeah, over the, here, we don't. The eat line dogs. of where things are edible and aren't is like we stop and there's like you know it might be you know we can have goat, we can have cow, we can have rabbit, we can have duck, but we stop at like horse and we don't touch dog or cat or things like that. But or birds, like you're not gonna eat a parrot, but I'm eating a duck. Not a lot of meat on its bones either. Yeah, it's just it's interesting where we draw the line of what's an edible pet and what isn't. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting interesting way to look at it. I would have probably gone the same way with like foods, but in terms of like berries and stuff like that, like imagine having to work out, being the first people to work out what to eat and like what was poisonous. And what yeah, was I was going to say, what was poisonous? It's kind of like, it's kind of like, oh, there's this red thing. Like, I don't know if it's good. Let's find out. Actually, and dies. I got a good one. Uh, well, I think what they would find weird is just religion in general. Depending on yeah, your geographical ideology. location, yeah. you, you I, believe, I, in I, ideologies. believe in this. Ideologies. Believe in this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How, how are they're you, all you guys, somehow different. You guys technologically have the same sophistication as us to get off this planet and explore and do other things, but Yet you're, you're stuck here. Killing, you're killing each other based on uh, arbitrary borders and like geographical lines that you've created that all now have different cultures. Which in the, sc- the scope of the universe is so insignificant. Dumb. And then Thanos comes by and... <laughs> See, that's one of my that's one of my favorite arguments of people like oh the aliens don't exist is that 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 the technology they have is so sophisticated that, that what they've done to see us at that time we look so primitive and stupid they just didn't even consider coming here i think the grass yeah, it's like we've talked we, about it we, we've traveled to space like we've clearly got the technology to go to space so yeah now you need to anyway. go further no anyway. musk is musk is wrong for wanting to go to mars <laughs> Is this another talking topic for next week? Billionaires should be able to do things with their money. <laughs> Apparently, Ben's got a—he's got a, something against space travel. No, I love it. I, I mean, you love space travel. You got something. You still got something in your in your bonnet about it. <laughs> yeah, people that don't like space travel I don't understand economics. That's fair. Well, should we leave it there then? I think we've been talking for a while. That's usual. a good one. All right. See, I don't get after I perform. <laughs> High five. Um, <laughs> it would be cool if you had to actually like line that up like yeah it's just like yes <laughs> i've just got randomly a top hat right here <laughs> i guess before we do leave as always should ask if anything's happening i know chris is still not doing his um core stuff yet which <laughs> is what he's gonna say uh, uh well it's, it's technically not like being it's not being delivered like that per se so it's more so delivery through like an online portal. So yes. basically, I'm just going to continue working on it until all the modules are finished. Then I'll go through and record 
um, all the content and for it. And then, then I'll, I'll have you done any before. work on it since last week's episode? I've actually done a lot. I did a lot of work on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm making progress. I'm making progress. I am currently <laughs> Told you, I 35% want to say these percent K- done. Zero plus I want to one save- is 100%. I want to see these KPIs. So I'm 35% <laughs> done, effective as of yesterday. <laughs> Benny boy, what you got going on much? Uh, I'm still taking clients. So definitely if you are looking at any sort of changes before Christmas, especially don't wait till the new year for that shit because it's dumb. Get in now so we can get started and actually start learning some behaviors to enjoy Christmas and not have to, I, I have, I've heard already people saying they're waiting till the new year and giving up. I was about life. to say, should that be the topic for next year, next year, next week? I mean, you can't keep adding topics to the week, mate. We've only got one episode. Well, if we make a, if we make a list on your whiteboard next to the dick pics, then we have things to talk about each week. I hundred percent drew a dick too. Hundred percent drew a dick. <laughs> um, that way we can reel them. So up. we're forgetting next week what that actually was. Yep. So yeah, that's already. As gone. long as you rub, rub that out. Maybe yeah, maybe gone. I'll write it down on my whiteboard behind me and be like, okay, yeah. this is what we're um, talking about. But yeah, so definitely reach out. Let's get things going if you are interested. Um, and as the whiteboard behind me is showing, not related to dick pics, um, I am starting to map out the short course and get that started. So the goal is to have that done by Feb. So it's ready to roll out and be tested and baited and, and looked over by March and have that going before I go back to uni. So it is um, pretty much the the fundamentals of success mapping that I understand it as and think that are applicable to not any specific field, but are just the fundamentals of what people miss misunderstand need to learn and should uh, include or attribute to their behaviors. I dig it. And I've just got a mentorship going on starting next year. So if you're wanting to learn anything specific, if you're a coach, a client, or just a gym junkie, and you want to learn more about a certain topic, we have three, six and 12 month options. Hit me up and we'll give you a little bit of a phone call and see what you want to do and see if we can tailor it to you and your specific wants and needs. Um, and also I have suggested to Chris to run a two day seminar at a gym, but he thinks he's not going to have enough brain power. So I think we should just all give him shit. So everyone jump in his DMs and give him shit because we want to do a practical, uh, just do like five minutes before you do it. Just give him T and E. Fuck it. I'm going to be like, by that point, it's going to be like, fucking, I could be like eight weeks out, seven weeks out. So we'll see. We'll see. No, you have the brain capacity to do something then. Yeah. Just, just okay. talk to Dean. Switch to um, switch to keto so you get more if brain not, function. Cognitive. My first priority is inside out condition. Yes. Okay. Is what? Oh. Inside out condition. Oh, right. I was like dick skin lean is what dick he's skin lean, basically. All those veins on the dicks from super bad. It's what he wants. <laughs> it's like it's like we say dick skin lean, but what happens if you've been circumcised? <laughs> I actually never even, thought about that. <laughs> even more Jewish lean. Jewish skin lean. <laughs> We're ending it there. (laughs) We're done. As always, guys and girls, thanks for tuning in as always. Um, If you need to hit us up, jump in the DMs. Annoy Chris more than anyone. And when we do put up the Q&A boxes, if there's anything you want us to talk about or any questions you want to ask, as always, throw them in there and we'll get to them hopefully on the podcast. Until next week, goodbye. See you guys.